Thank you all for doing this wonderful selection. It's uh, 15 movies. It's uh, very, very varied in themes and in aesthetics. And uh, yeah, thank you for this uh, very, very nice offering. But we should also acknowledge that most of these films were shot and post-produced before the pandemic restrictions took hold or post-produced during the pandemic restrictions, but post-production is something that can be done by remote. Actual filming cannot be done. I'm glad we have an animation in between the films because uh, this uh, bad moment uh, for cinema was actually not such a bad moment for animations. I mean, it's the least affected kind of uh, films, animation and uh, found footage uh, films or documentaries prospered in this lockdown. Uh, and I'm glad for animators because they're generally kind and wonderful people who work uh, all day on, on their animations and we have acknowledged them. Uh, I'm also glad uh, the festival includes so many perspectives on cinema because you have some social realism and you have some um, documentaries. You have a blend of these two kind of um, modes of doing cinema. Uh, we also have uh, some uh, wonderful examples of the um, Greek weird waves. Uh, we also uh, vary. It's, uh, it's uh, a thing about seeing some things that are happening in um, other corners of the world. And this is always uh, funny and some would say enriching. Um, so we start this festival and uh, I think um, it's up to you to explain both to me and to the guys and girls who are watching this, uh, how did you come up with the selection? And what I mean is uh, how many films did you see and are you looking for something when you select films or just uh, go with the best things? Do you favor one kind? How do you balance this selection? Because I understand you started it, each of you, uh, on uh, your national cinema, and then all of you gathered to have this final selection. So please, all of you, take turns and explain this uh, this building of the festival, how it was built. Okay, so uh, <laughs> maybe Ioana, uh, if you want to, to start to talk about the Greece and the Greek selection, press selection and selection. Mm -hmm. So yeah, our approach, um, at least for the first edition, was to go through invitations. Uh, we curated film through the inviting process, so we didn't have a submission in that uh, sense, but we from all the films we've watched or we knew as programmers, we selected, we did a pre-selection for each country. 
And then um, came the interesting part where everyone um, saw the films and we exchanged on that, which was uh, for me a very nice experience. And I'd like to thank Verona for giving me this um, chance to work with international colleagues and agree on um, an international selection at the end. So yeah, this is a sum up, <laughs> so to say. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe it's important to point out the fact that uh, every, I mean, each of us, we do programming in other, I don't know, in cinemas, in other festivals. So we are used to see a lot of films, <laughs> a lot of shorts. And uh, of course, um, that's why we knew in a way uh, also uh, how some of the films could be received in our countries. I mean, also uh, for me, it's interesting to show some, uh, especially some some uh, short films from uh, South Africa and Egypt because uh, uh, it's not very easy to access them. So uh, uh, we also had this opportunity to show like little gems that we have from our national cinemas to show in other corners corners of the world. So. Um, uh, in my case, um, I think the first uh, press selection um, included uh, up to 20 films, so not so many, because I already knew a lot of them from the previous uh, works that I had. Uh, for some others, I asked for screen ex uh, screeners uh, as well, uh, but uh, I presented uh, to my colleagues up to seven um, films. And then we started a discussion because I think it's also like, like very important to, to see the entire selection, how is it built, you know? Maybe, yeah, some films were somehow very interesting and also the approach very interesting and the style of it. And uh, most of them very well done, I, I, I must confess. But still, when we put together in the program, some of them maybe, I don't know, uh, had l less importance or I don't know. In, uh, I think in a program, we have to put uh, in the light uh, these films, you know, not to, uh, so the arrangement and also how we split in these four collection of shorts that can be seen, uh, it's very important. The order, how they match together. So, yeah. And Andrew, how it was for you? <laughs> uh, I may add uh, just that, um... Uh, when we were selecting, when we were putting the final selection, uh, I noticed that um, uh, it was like a puzzle. We are completing the, the entire image. Uh, maybe we was not uh, uh, selecting, uh, putting this in mind uh, in, in the first uh, time. We was just uh, rating the films uh, before we talk. But later on, we, when we discussed, we found that some films are out of question, these films must be with us. And the, other, uh, the others were uh, just completing, uh, uh, good films I mean, but were completing something mis missing. Like uh, like you mentioned, uh, the, we have the documentaries, we have the uh, one animation, uh, and we felt uh, in, in some cases that this film will uh, add to our program to have uh, this uh, idea or this uh, cinematic wave or, si or, or, or way or this uh, type of cinema. So the uh, collection, after all, the 15 films uh, have contrast and on the same time uh, have the quality, which is something uh, a basic bit. Uh, where, where in, in each time we selected uh, one of the films. Um, and I believe that there was something good when we were, we were discussing the, uh, the films that um, some ideas were like uh, similar between different countries. Uh, mm -hmm. And we didn't uh, uh, have time to discuss that we need uh, mm -hmm. to a certain topic or certain idea to be in, in our films, but uh, it was something like uh, uh, by, by coincidence. And I believe this this thing was good for the films that uh, will connect uh, the five countries in the festival somehow. Okay. That, that is true. And also what is very important in this uh, festival, I think it's the connection with the crew and with the authors, because uh, for us, it's important after each screening to have a, a small discussion with the creative team or and other guests. And um, in this, uh, I, I, for me at least, it was important also uh, 
uh, to have a very good selection of terms, but also to be careful that we will have people uh, to whom to address after the screening, like people interested to discuss, because it's also like uh, a festival is not only about films, it's also about connecting people. So uh, yeah, mm, that was for me. I don't know my colleagues if uh, uh, they thought that of uh, the creative teams, but I was uh, thinking that they will uh, love to discuss with audience. And this is very important for me. Okay, so um, maybe uh, we can uh, have an overview of the films, of each of the films. Uh, can you present these films to our viewers? I think yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> we should. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I can start with the... Uh, with, uh, the first five films. Uh, so uh, beginning, let me introduce the three films from Egypt. Uh, so we have The, the Promised by uh, Ahmed al Ghanimi, which is a documentary, uh, was uh, premiered in uh, Berlin Ali last year. And uh, it's, uh, it's very unique because it has a, a very smart uh, sense of humor and uh, something like uh, uh, to know the Egyptian people from a different perspective than usual, I, I believe in this film and how they look sometimes to the history. Um, the second one is Ward uh, Hanat uh, Ward or Ward's uh, Henna Party uh, by Murad Mustafa. It was premiered last year in Clermont uh, Ferrand and actually went to uh, a huge number of festivals because it's a, a very good film. Uh, and it gives, gives a closer look to, uh, to an encounter between two women uh, during the preparations of a wedding. Uh, and wedding is uh, something that we are going to watch in, in many films. Uh, the third film from Egypt also, Sunday at Five by Sharif al Bendari, which is a film that mixes between the uh, documentary and the fiction in somehow, uh, which is, uh, I, I think uh, the director made it very well. Um, and from uh, uh, Lithuania, we have uh, One Life by uh, Maria uh, Stonaiti. And uh, I think it's, it's uh, one of the uh, documentaries which are very special. It's a, it's a very good experience. One of the films that you cannot expect how it will start and how it, how it will end and who is the protagonist, but it will take you in, in a very unique experience. And uh, the last of my five uh, from uh, South Africa, The Letter Reader by Sibiu uh, Sisu Khuzayu. And in this film, we will follow a young boy who changes the life of many people just by reading their letters, which is also a very interesting film. Okay, thank you, Andrew. And I'll continue uh, with the Greek selection and two more films from Lithuania and South Africa, respectively. So the first uh, Greek film I'll mention is Postcards from the End of the World by Konstantinos Andonopoulos from year 2019. Um, this film had a very successful festival run internationally, including a premiere at Sarajevo International Film Festival. Um, with the premise of a forthcoming apocalypse, postcards from the end of the world suggest a very different approach to the topic Greek summer holidays than the one we know. It's an uh, impressive, actually, cinematic universe combines an existential driven narrative with those comic, el comic elements that are inevitably part of the desperate human nature in the post-apocalyptic, or pre-apocalyptic, actually, context. And then we have Pathologies of Everyday Life uh, by Alexandros Pavathanasopoulos, also from 2019. This film is out of the Greek context, uh, which means that it has English uh, speaking protagonist, a very dynamic uh, duo indeed, um, who we are following during a night of revenge. Pathologies of Everyday Life makes use of a character driven narrative and uh, delivering a very original and striking story that is not afraid of shedding light on dark and unspoken parts of the human soul. Then the third and last Greek film is The Mouse Story by Miltiades Christidis from 2020. 
A mouse lives among humans in a daily human-like routine, working at a supermarket and fighting to earn its living. With subtle, with subtle humor and lots of sensibility, the mouse story brings a fresh and unique perspective to universal subjects such as loneliness, social exclusion and discrimination. The Lithuanian participation I'll present to you is Dummy by, by Laurinas Baresa from 2020, which had its world premiere at Berlinale last year. Um, we are following the reenactment of a rape crime scene, which is staged under the instructions um, of the police unit's only female officer. Um, in a simple, slow-burning, slow-paced narrative, the story evolves into an impressively multi-layered constellation of characters, which demonstrate the tragic contradictions within a system of socially accepted gender roles. The last film uh, from South Africa, What Did You Dream? by Karabo Letigida, is a film from 2020 as well, which uh, participated, among others, at Clermont Ferrand and Palm Springs, two very important festivals for the short film scene. Um, spending the last days of the summer holidays at her grandma's, grandmother's place, an 11 year old girl has difficulties to remember her dreams. With strong elements of um, magic realism, the film stays close to the child's point of view in an authentic way that points out the vital necessity of being able to dream. Okay, and I will continue, of course, with the Romanian selection. Uh, first of all, I'm glad that we included uh, one diploma film because uh, Contraindications is uh, made by Lucia Kikos, a student um, at uh, the National University of uh, Theater and uh, Cinema in Bucharest. Uh, a, a family drama uh, presenting the relationship between a daughter and uh, her mother, and uh, also trying to present um, which are uh, the consequences um, when we avoid and we tend to avoid uh, conflicts, direct conflicts with the dear ones. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Lucia also successfully uh, uh, did, uh, let's say, um, um, long shots and also like um, uh, naturalistic performances of the characters, uh, uh, things that are uh, like very characteristic for the Romanian new wave. But still, we feel that uh, there is a lot of uh, tenderness and uh, care for the characters. So uh, I'm uh, very glad that uh, we include it uh, in the selection. Uh, then we have uh, the animation, My Father's Shoes, uh, which is uh, directed by um, uh, Anton and uh, Damian Groves, um, half English, half Romanian brothers. Um, it's um, also a story uh, about a father who is telling um, um, to the, his daughter uh, about an extraordinary journey around the world, which is also like what we do and or we want to 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 do to travel around the world with our festival and with our films. So I, I really think it's uh, it fits very well. Um, but also uh, in terms of uh, narrativity is inspired uh, by a, a real story of Dumitru Dan, the first man to walk around the world. So uh, it's a mix uh, between uh, reality and fiction. And the third Romanian film is uh, Bucharest Seen from Above by Andrei uh, uh, Răuțu. Um, this is also a, a film uh, um, centered on the family relationships. So we have here a nephew and um, uh, a charming old lady uh, who has to leave her home because the family can't uh, take care of her anymore. But um, the same, um, let's say, um, uh, situation, the human and the realistic ensemble, but also with uh, inspired dialogues that uh, can uh, engage everyone. So um, very glad to have uh, also uh, this uh, film uh, uh, in our short film competition. Then um, 
a very interesting film from Lithuania, Community Gardens, uh, by Vitautus Katkus. Um, the film actually um, is uh, directed and shot by Vitautus because he's a cinematographer, and uh, this was the first uh, uh, his uh, short like uh, like director. Uh, it's uh, very interesting in terms of visuals, but. Again, uh, it portrays a cold relationship between a father and the son. So it seems that uh, my selection of film were, <laughs> was in this direction of a family relationship. Uh, but still, it's uh, it's um, very interesting how the mood and how, how how he recreated the feeling of warm and slow summer days uh, in contrast with these cold uh, relations that uh, he presents in the film and um, Mtanzi, a uh, South African uh, short film, maybe one of the most uh, successful in the last year in the festival uh, uh, landscape. Um, it, at the first glance, it, it looks like uh, just a film be, um, about the man who is uh, coming back to uh, his home, but uh, very quickly the tension uh, escalates and uh, the scenario uh, uh, changes. And uh, we have uh, actually differences between uh, race and class uh, nowadays in South Africa. So this is also a very tough topic that it is presented. Um, so uh, yeah, I am. this is uh, the selection. I hope uh, that uh, people will have uh, their own uh, opinions, not, uh, um, I, I don't want to say that uh, um, our arguments are uh, the most uh, important. I invite people to see the films <laughs> and to, to have their own opinion about them and to vote their favorite film because we uh, put uh, two awards uh, and one of them is uh, the public uh, audience award. So they will choose their favorite and uh, the film can uh, win 1,000 euros. Okay. Um, Nyona, I will take something you said about families uh, as a subject of uh, the short films selected. It's, uh, it's interesting because it is actually one of the main things, the family. Uh, we have it uh, in one of the Greek films, uh, Postcards from the End of the World, yeah. where the family goes uh, on an island. And we have it in um, one of the Romanian films, and we have it in the second Romanian film. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a big family gathering for a wedding in uh, one of the Egyptian films. Yes. And uh, we have it in the Lithuanian uh, frosty relationship between father and son film. Uh, so by now I have five films centered on family. And uh, maybe for some of the people who see these films, it's going to um, cause a bit of uh, loneliness and uh, missing the loved ones because some of us are separated from their families in this moment. Uh, also, there is uh, there is another thing that I, I really, really think we need to point out. It's um, documentary, but it's a documentary approach that does not always result in a, a very, very classic formative documentary. Uh, because it's uh, one of the documentaries, uh, the, um, um, just a second. Uh, 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 one of the documentaries can be considered um, the Romanian animation because the story is real. It's 95% of it actual facts. Uh, and this is interesting because uh, animation and documentary met a lot in the last years in uh, more cinemas and uh, since uh, Waltz with Bashir, there was uh, a certain growth and then truly a Romanian uh, feature documentary that was animated came along. So uh, also we're, um, we're seeing this documentary side in other films that don't want to be documentaries. One Life, the documentary that you presented to us as something that is so unexpected and it really is unexpected, is a straightforward documentary, but the way the images and the visual storytelling is organized, it's more in the suspenseful area than in any kind of regular documentary. Um, then there's something I really want to point out, the Greek weird wave, these three Greek films that actually 
perfect something that was very, very hard to, you know, perfect since Yorgos Latimos did his films. And uh, I'm so glad to see three of them that are so different. Do you think uh, they belong to the Greek wave tradition, to the weird wave tradition? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, okay, I'm not sure I share you have, this. Uh, <laughs> you have uh, one yeah. human-sized rat who is unhappy. And, well, uh, the premise, <laughs> yeah. Mm. And it's surreal. Have, um, mm. The remote apocalypse that is not something very often in films made them be Greek or not. Mm. And um, I also like the way that um, the two guys are quoting Shakespeare and fighting over and inviting actually uh, fate over them. It's, it's mm -hmm. something very specific there and very well done. And this is one of the things I would like to thank Andrew for offering us uh, free, extremely well done Egyptian films that are also very different because uh, it's from um, straight documentary, a wonderfully shot documentary about people and ruins and all the perspective it gives is wonderful because generally uh, we don't think uh, as tourists uh, or us Romanian as um, people from a country with not so many touristic attractions. We don't consider that um, for some people, this is everyday life. It's like the people in Greece and uh, the people in Egypt experience it a lot. And we, we, we never think about this. Yes. Yeah, so thank you for showing us that. Also, uh, it's it's very interesting that um, all the um, approach to the preparations for the wedding in the Hannah Hans document uh, film also feels pretty documentary-like because it is a custom that I suppose uh, is not extremely exotic for regular Egyptian weddings. And it's also uh, this thing that uh, we see, we've see we seen a lot, this uh, ensemble cast when you have many actors with very small parts and all of them are very good in their parts. Yeah. And the ensemble of the interactions is uh, recognizable as very, very credible and uh, realistic, even if you're not a part of that culture. So yeah, this is something I, I really need to thank you for. Uh, also, um, guys, uh, I can only hope that the next uh, edition will uh, will keep this uh, very high standard, uh, both in technical things and uh, in pointing out certain things, like the South African selection for me was uh, centered on dreams. Mm. And I'm saying this, uh, even if one of the films was uh, a bit a uh, weird moment of uh, social realities colliding, but uh, all of the films seem to have this dreamlike approach in the South African selection. Uh, with the um, moment that we're in, I would like each of you to tell me what you wish for the next edition. What, what, what would you like to showcase next because now this is just starting and I know uh, some of you might be nervous because it's regular for everybody who does festivals to be nervous when the festival starts but what do you expect for the next edition short films wise Andrew yes <laughs> what do you like to see when you do the selection um I'm, I'm, I, I was just thinking about the, the opportunity uh, that uh, maybe the, <clears throat> the pandemic gave to the, um, to the short films, because uh, when many festivals canceled, they kept the uh, short films competition. So I think, uh, for example, Cannes itself uh, did this. So I, I think that uh, this encourages filmmakers and producers to do more uh, shorts and, and let me say do more good shorts because here in Egypt we have a lot, a huge number of, uh, of short films actually. But when you start to uh, recommend or, or go to the films that you can uh, uh, say to people to watch them, you will just find about uh, five 
in, in the year and five is the maximum number actually. So um, what I what I need for the for the or, or, or what I'm looking forward in the next edition that uh, uh, we have uh, more confidence from filmmakers in the short films. It's not just a step to uh, make a film a short film and then go to uh, making features, but it's it's a it's a type of films that you can uh, make it uh, uh, even when you are working on uh, your features. So I believe I, I, what I need that we have more. Or not more. I mean, we have a good number of submissions that believes in the importance of our festival and also in the importance of the short films, especially during this experience from different countries at the same time. Okay, thank you. Joanna? <clears throat> Um, I have to say, uh, in general, I really hope for the physical version as well, not just online, because it will be, of course, very interesting to have the audiences uh, all at the same time and exchange uh, simultaneously. And uh, this is something very unique, and I really hope it will take place uh, like this um, in the year 2022. <laughs> Um, regarding the shorts, um, I have to say it will be, of course, very, very interesting to see what this whole situation, which is also very existential for the creative people, what it will leave behind when it's uh, over. Um, and let's hope it will be over soon. So I'm looking forward to such kind of films that uh, deal with it in uh, direct or less direct ways and see what's the how people reflect on this whole thing we are going through so i'm curious about this part <laughs> yeah well, i'm curious about that also Mirana? yes i uh, i just hope that uh, uh, the authors will uh, there uh, to say more than the you know the pandemic because now I saw a lot of uh, filmmakers doing films about uh, pandemic times, uh, but still I think this is just the first step. I mean, we, in my opinion, we must uh, uh, think uh, bigger. And uh, yeah, I think this was a very difficult time for all of us and uh, put us in contact with real selves. So uh, the films should be, in my opinion, more authentic, more uh, uh, related, um, to the values that we believe in. So um, um, yeah, I, I hope this was a tough um, uh, moment for all of us, but something that can help us to develop more this cinematic uh, cinematic view. So uh, yeah, it, we will see <laughs> how it will be. Um, of course, it will be uh, good to have uh, screenings on site, not only online, but I, I want to remind everyone that uh, the concept of the festival will uh, remain also uh, in this uh, time. I mean, we will screen on precise hours. So uh, in a way, even if we are in our houses or I don't know, very far from each one from each other, we can see the films um, at the same time as we really wanted to, to be together. Um, the festival will um, um, show uh, these um, short films on festival scope and uh, the tickets will uh, be on sale starting uh, Friday 19. So um, if you want to, to know more about the festival, you can also um, uh, maybe subscribe to our newsletter and uh, you'll have also a surprise from our partner movie because uh, they will uh, give you three months of uh, great cinema so uh, uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter and movie will give you a present um, yeah and uh, i want to thank you <laughs> for uh, being here please um, be with us it's uh, it's Time to meet. <laughs> Thank you.